Hi Casas Crusaders and Tamayo Tigers, this is Miss Fossis and today's lesson is for Friday, April 30th, the last day in April. Have you ever heard of the saying, April showers bring May flowers? Because that is what our lesson is on today. We are going to be drawing a few different kinds of flowers um, for a garden and I'm actually outside in my garden right now so I'm going to show you a few of the things that I've planted and the flowers that are going to come up in May. So this is the flower garden. You can see some teeny tiny little white flowers on this very pretty green leaf here, these little poofy white flowers. These flowers next to it are going to be, see how they're teeny tiny right now? They're going to grow into violets. They're going to be nice purple violet flowers. The next flowers that we have in the garden are these ones that have sprung up real tall, right? They've been working hard all April so that in May their flowers are going to be showing. These are lilies we're going to see. And you might be noticing in your neighborhood or in your garden all of these little, this is our little, it's called a burning bush. All right now it's got all these new little leaves on it, these tiny little leaves. You can see how small they are compared to my giant hand. But all of these little plants have been working so hard all April to grow. And then in May we're going to be able to see some of their beautiful flowers. You can see that I have set up with my work. I have a piece of paper that I laid landscape style, long ways landscape style, a pencil and a Sharpie. And I had colored pencils, so I grabbed those too. You know Sharpie is one of my favorite tools. So to draw this first flower, I started with like a nice curved line for the stem and a circle for the center. Remember that things in nature are not perfect, so nothing should be straight up and down. Um, I'm gonna add a leaf to the side here, and then I'm gonna also add um, roots down here on the bottom. We know that roots help the plants get all the water and nutrition that they need. Now, this next flower, I drew up the stem and some longer leaves, and then I started with a half circle for the middle section. I'm also going to move to using organic lines, so keep a lookout for my organic lines. Those are kind of squiggly lines, right? And this flower I'm drawing is a carnation, so they have some kind of more natural lines there. Now the next flower I'm starting is going to be the biggest flower I have ever seen. Biggest flower I've ever seen is a sunflower. Sunflowers can grow to be up taller than Miss Foss is tall, taller than six feet tall. I drew a big, long, and strong stem and a circle in the middle, and I dotted that circle with my Sharpie to make it nice and dark. Now I'll draw the petals in with kind of like a long teardrop shape. You can go all the way around, or you can kind of mix it up like I'm doing here. And big roots on the sunflower because it is the biggest flower in our garden. Now, do you remember that little poofy white flower from the garden, from my garden? That's what I tried to draw there and a little root system on that one as well. Now the next flower, again a wavy line, and I'm going to use some of these small little teardrop shapes. And students, you can pause this video anytime you need to. Uh, onto the last flower. I kind of drew a similar flower to the first one, but I spread out those leaves. Thank you for drawing this beautiful garden with us, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week for the next lesson.